think the IV room success is about 75% prep and 25% actual compounding and preparation of the, of the medication. We use that glove, that glove hand, to then help you maneuver this hand to the other glove without touching the outside of the glove. That is a trickery. Hey y'all, glad you came. I'm Monique, welcome and so welcome back. Today we're gonna be talking all about having a septic technique in the IV room. I made another IV room video, go ahead and watch that one and then come back to this one. But I want to give a more detailed look into what it's like to work in the IV room and why it's necessary to have an aseptic technique while working there and keeping or maintaining a sterile field. Before we start, I'm gonna go ahead and put a disclaimer on the screen. You guys, please read that because information in this video is something that is very serious and I am not responsible for anything. <laughs> so let's go ahead and just put that on the screen right now. I will also have that on the entire video as we talk, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get started. First of all, what is a septic technique? In simple terms, this is just a way to keep the IV room very clean and sterile because you are making medications that are intravenous, meaning that they actually go directly into the veins of patients, okay? So that's why it's really important to have a sterile envi environment and to use aseptic technique. Now, there are many things that go into using aseptic technique, and these things actually start outside of the IV room. We're gonna go through each thing one at a time. I have notes, so I won't you know, get off track. But the very first thing that we wanna do is we want to remove things that do not belong on our person before going into the ante room, okay? So what I mean by that is removing your phone, your Bluetooth, your watch, your ring, all the things. Now, of course, again, these are all based on, you know, where you work, but I'm talking about generally speaking, you don't want any jewelry, you don't want any watches, no rings, things that interfere and carry bacteria, okay? So go ahead and remove those, all right? Once you remove those, also think about your makeup. You don't want to be wearing makeup in the IV room either because that attracts bacteria, okay? And so that really interrupts the sterile field as well. So there you have it. All right, so already working in the IV room is gonna limit you, okay? Because you're gonna have to take some things off that you may normally wear when you work out on the floor in the hospital. All right, now that we have those things removed, it's time to get ready to become sterile, okay? To get ready to step into the buffer room or the sterile room. The ante room is the room that sits outside of the buffer room, and that's the room where you basically get dressed to go into the buffer room. So the very first thing that you do is you put on your mask, you put on your headgear, looks like a bonnet, cover your hair, okay? And then cover your hair and your ears. And then you're gonna make sure to put on your shoe covers. Now, a point here is that sometimes with the shoe covering, if you have your ankles out, like your skin out, you may have to do a bigger shoe covering, it looks like a boot. So whichever one you need, but I suggest wearing socks, covering your ankles, wearing pants to go over the socks. That way you can only just use the basic shoe covering, okay? All right, so the next thing is washing our hands, okay? We're gonna go over to the sink and we're stepping into the ante room area with the sink, okay? Now, you typically in an IV room or in any sterile setting, you're gonna have a sink that requires you to actually hit the own with your leg. You actually would not be touching any knobs with your hands, okay? That's to further encourage aseptic technique. Go ahead and hit that with your leg or your knee and wait until that water gets warm. When that water is warm, go ahead and rinse your hands. You wanna get up here as well, arms, okay? And then you wanna get you some soap and start to wash, right? Also, if your facility has nail cleaners, you can get those and go under your nails, continue to wash, okay? And then you're going to rinse, and then you're gonna grab your paper towel, and you're gonna wipe your hands dry, and you're gonna kick that water back off. The main thing here to remember is that soap, that water, and that 20 seconds, and most of the sinks actually have a timer on them, okay? So make sure that you're washing for that amount of time. After that, you're gonna step over further into the ante room, and you are gonna get your gown. Your gown usually comes with loopholes that go around your thumb. It makes it easy for the gown to stay down here, like over this area here, 
your arm, okay, your wrist, <laughs> and you're going to put that on, button it up, all the things. You may wear a medium, a large, whatever the case may be, figure it out, and then, you know, grab that one every time. So once you put that on, personally, I wear goggles. So I go ahead and put my goggles on that are actually in the ante area as well of uh, the IV room. So I'll go ahead and put those goggles on to protect my eyes because we're working with very serious medications. And unfortunately, I worked in pharmacy for a long time. And sometimes things happen where, you know, a squirting can happen or just anything like that. You want to avoid those things jumping into your eye, okay? Because again, you're working with medication that is serious. <laughs> so, and you are working with liquid medication, okay? So anyway, you're going to go ahead and do that if you have those at your facility. I have them at mine. Go ahead and put that on. All right. Now I'm ready to put my gloves on. I take my gloves out. Pick out your size. It may take you a minute to learn which size is best for you and the material that's best for you, whether it's latex, latex-free, whatever the case may be. Go ahead and lay those out on your counter that is also aseptic. And you are going to first put your hand in one glove. You're going to use that glove, that gloved hand, to then help you maneuver this hand to the other glove without touching the outside of the glove. That is a trickery, okay? <laughs> so once you figure out how to do that, you are a pro, all right? So you don't want to be touching the glove with your bare hand. So it's in, and then use this one to push this in, pull down. And then once this glove is on, you're going to then pull down the other glove over the little loophole around your wrist over your gown, all right? So hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, I'm sure they're going to show you when you get your your uh, your job in the IV room. Okay, so now we're ready to go into the buffer room. We're ready to go and to make some IVs, okay? Now, depending on the shift that you're working, you could be working a shift where you do a lot of batching, where you basically uh, compound the exact, you know, so many times, and then you do different jobs have like, you know, five different medications, you'll compound five different medications, but within that compounding, each medication needs like 10 or 20 or 50 or whatever the case may be. You could be doing that or you could be doing um, the order set, which is basically what patients are on according to um, a time schedule. So you'd be doing the set or you could be doing compounding. I personally prefer compounding because it's my favorite thing to do. Okay, so once you have that um, figured out, this is how you're going to be staying sterile within the buffer room and using the aseptic technique in the first place, okay? And we just we just decided that, or not decided, but <laughs> we just discussed that either you're going in there to make the set or you're going in there to make compounded IV medications. Okay, now let's come back out. Let's rewind. <laughs> Now, before we go in there and do all of that, that's just to give you the idea of what goes into going in there. Deciding on what you're going to be, what shift you're going to be, right? If you are the compounding technician, that means you need to get all of your supplies ready before you go in to the IV room, okay? What does that entail of? That entails of knowing what you're making, getting the valves for that medication, getting the syringes for that medication, getting the locks that go on the medication uh, syringe lure locks, like the, the actual tops to go onto the syringes when you finish making the medication. And then you're also going to go into get your actual IV uh, diluent, okay? So that's going to be either normal saline, sterile water, or dextrose, or a mixture of such, or even something else if you're making a different type of medication. It just depends. But every compound has a diluent. And I'm going to talk about compounding from here on out because that's what I do. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and grab all that, all right? Grab it all, grab your recipes. Uh, depending on where you work, you may have a computer system that actually tells you how to make everything step by step, or you may not. Uh, no matter if you do or you don't, for me personally, I still always use my recipe sheet. I just, I feel safe with it and I like it and it helps me to count up how much stuff that I need to bring into the room with me, okay? And it'll wipe everything down with alcohol while you're pulling all this stuff. And then you are going to just wipe everything down. All right. You got to open up everything, wipe everything down. You'll probably have some bins. You want to wipe those down. You want to get all that stuff together to bring with you into the IV room. Again, try not to go in there unprepared because the last thing you want is to be coming in and out of the IV room. And then also when you're in the IV room, in the sterile field, in the laminar airflow hood, you don't want to be coming in and out of that hood, grabbing things you could have grabbed at the beginning. It's all about preparation. I think the IV room success is about 75% prep and 25% actual compounding and preparation of the, of the medication. Okay. So we talked about all those things, which you got to do before you get in there. So Again, we did the rewind. So basically, you've got all your supplies, all your diluent, all your vials, medication, everything you need, your recipes, everything's wiped down, everything's aseptic, 
passing it through, okay? And then you're going to decide what you want to make first and you have your own little schedule of how you want to make stuff, okay? Because with compounding, a lot of times it's not on a time basis. It's, you know, it's based on what you're making, not the actual patient needing it at that time. Okay, so once we have that down packed, I want to talk a little bit about how to make these <laughs> IVs and how to make it easier for yourself. You want to, you know, give yourself grace because when you first go into the IV room, you're going to fumble. When I say fumble, I mean you are going to mess up. You're going to have to redo things. It's going to feel very overwhelming. and You're going to feel like, you know what? I don't want to do this. This is too much because your time scheduling will be off because you're slow and that's okay. It's better to be slow than fast and wrong, okay? So just give yourself about two to three weeks to get your flow, get your rhythm. And once you get your rhythm, then you'll be good to go, okay? But a few things I want to note is really knowing which syringes to use for each medication preparation, really knowing which spikes to use with each uh, medication preparation, okay? And understanding um, which locks go onto the syringes. If you are making a narcotic medication, most likely the lock that goes into lure lock syringe is going to be red, Okay, if it's not a lure lock that's red, it's probably going to be beige. So it just depends on each medication and what you're making and where it is going in the hospital. Okay, um, also knowing the correct um, needle length, the gauge, all the things that makes a difference. You want to get the correct gauge, okay, because that's going to help you to pull out the medication um, in a way that you're not wasting it. You know, you're not wasting it in the actual lure lock area of the syringe, okay? So once you know that, and you'll kind of go by colors, like these particular packages will have green, yellow, pink, whatever. You'll you'll learn them as you go, and you'll know which one to pull as you're making things. Think of this as kind of like surgery on an IV bag, if you will. <laughs> so it's like knowing which utensils go with each preparation of the medication. You're going to get good at that. It's going to save you a lot of time. If you don't know that, you're going to waste a lot of time because you're going to be ending up, you know, taking things out in a way that slows you down. When you know how to use your spikes and where to use your spikes, it's going to speed up it's also going to save your wrists and your hands and your shoulders. One thing that's going to hurt if you work in the IV room is your shoulders, your wrists, and your hands, especially your thumb, because you're always constantly pulling back and you're always um, constantly engaging your shoulder. So make sure that uh, you understand that and you know that and you might want to work out or something. I don't know. But <laughs> or you might want to work in there a little bit less. Whatever the case may be, just know there are, you know, some things that come along with working in the IV room and that's one of them is some of the muscular pain is going to be in your shoulders, your thumbs and your wrists. Okay. So we have that. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is what you're actually making. So in the IV room, you're going to have, you know, everything coming at you. Any medication that's on the floor can usually be made in the IV room. Anything from iron supplements to anticoagulants to antibiotics, adrenaline neurotransmitters, and even IVs for heart surgery, usually used in the cath lab. And these are for the purpose of helping to sustain the aging heart while the operation is going on. So as you can see, that's just some. You are making some very serious medication. I think I've mentioned this before in a video you know, people may say, oh, you don't get paid enough and you know, that could be true, but really don't, you know, equal the pay to the importance of the job. The job is very, very important, yet the pay may be here. The importance is here. <laughs> so protect your license and do things the correct way, okay? That way you can always continue to make more money to kind of reach where you want to be. So anyway, that is what goes into as far as what you're making in the IV room, what you're preparing rather, not making, but preparing in the IV room. It's really fun. And I think it's a very uh, useful skill to have. In particular, if you are like me and you're someone wanting to be a nurse, then it really help you in the long run because you're not going to have to think as much as someone who has never worked with IV tools and IV preparations, medications, different things like that, or diluents. So therefore you are light years ahead of somebody who has not worked, you know, with these different types of things in their job. So I definitely think that being a pharmacy technician in the IV room is a really good exposure and a really good job to have while you are in a pre-nursing program or a nursing program because it is, you know, simple, it's easy enough, and it's not patient-facing usually.
right? It's generally speaking, non-patient facing. So it's, to me, kind of stress-free. And it's uh, really good to learn the different medications, to see them coming through and to learn what they're actually for. Because when you get on the other side of that, you'll be then dispensing that medication as the nurse. So I do think the IV room is a really good, you know, bridge between pharmacy and nursing and or something else, you know, so I uh, like surgery technician, different things like that. So yes, I'll leave you guys with a few extra tips and you want to actually, you know, not come out of the hood a lot. But if you haven't come out of the hood, make sure that you are cleaning your gloves with the alcohol. Make sure you're wiping the hood down after each um, medication preparation with the alcohol wipes that are supplied by your facility. Also, make sure that if you drop something on the ground and you have to pick it up, do not use those same gloves to then go make another medication preparation. Make sure you step out back into the ante room and change your gloves, okay? Just remember that. Remember that. <laughs> Uh, so yes, I know you're in a sterile environment. People are always cleaning. The air is clean, different things like that. You want to keep it clean. Okay. Also, when it comes to the laminate, the laminator, the laminar flow hood that you're in. Okay. Make sure that you are actually allowing the air from the laminar flow hood to really surround the vial and or the syringe that you're using or you're pulling up. So you don't ever want to interrupt your first air contact between what you're making or between an actual object in the laminar flow hood. So you wanna have it about six inches away from the back, right, of, of the hood. And you wanna have that air flowing all over the vial or the vials that are that are in the hood. Just remember to separate them enough. So, you know, this comes with practice. I mean, you're not gonna always get that perfectly correct. We all make mistakes. So just make sure you know how to do that and do your best to always use it. Because think about the other person on the other side of that medication as being your family or your friend. You would want them to have a medication prepared in a sterile envir environment with, you know, no mistakes. Okay? So think about that when you're making intravenous solutions for patients in the hospital. Okay, so that's all that I have to share. If you guys have any questions, you can let me know. Again, remember that this video is for informational purposes only, so I'm going to most likely point you to your facility and their particular code of conduct, rules and regulations around the IV room. But, you know, maybe some things I, I will be able to answer. All right, so I hope you guys have a peaceful and productive rest of your day, and I will talk to you on the next upload.